Well, hello there, guys. Agrippa Maxenis here coming at you with an exciting campaign for Battlestar Galactica Deadlock. That's right, we're taking on the Cylons right now. We're going to see if we can't get a decent um, situation. Um, I think we're going to take Commander rank, although I should probably take Lieutenant. Um, we're going to go ahead and try to start with Commander and see how we do, guys. After Vergon buried their nukes, the leaders of the 12 colonies promised we would never see war of that scale again. Peace would reign in our lifetime and the lifetimes of our children. They could not have predicted the Cylon Rebellion less than 30 years later. The worst conflict in colonial history, and we are at a stalemate. No foothold gained that isn't lost again within weeks. The Jupiter Project was supposed to be our ace in the hole, the largest, most powerful battle stars ever created. Each of the 12 colonies were promised one, in return for signing the Articles of Colonization. The first, Galactica, was Caprica's crowning glory. It went missing two weeks after deployment. Athena, the fifth ship to be completed, belongs to Pycon. We were days away from delivering it when we heard the news. Pycon's capital cities were devastated by silent assault fleets. Among them, our own colonial fleet headquarters. There was no chance to intervene. Command of Colonial Fleet has fallen to Rear Admiral Kane. Our mobile shipyard, Daedalus, has become the ad hoc fleet headquarters. As Kane's XO aboard Daedalus, you have been promoted to operations commander of the entire Colonial Fleet. Kane intends immediate retaliation for the attack on Pycon. The war room awaits your arrival, Commander. Okay, guys, so there we go. We are beginning our campaign, our fight against the Cylons to save humanity. Uh, so I hope that you guys are prepared, and I know um, we had a few uh, Battlestar Galactica diehards uh, get angry at my last video. Um, you have to understand, I put up my victories on this channel, I put up my defeats, I put up just about everything. So that was a, pr a particularly bad defeat, and that's why I put it up. I thought you guys would think it was funny and would enjoy watching it. Now, of course, we are trying to campaign, so I'm absolutely going to need all your support, guys, and your tactical Pycon's assistance. Pycon's Battlestar is almost ready to deliver. But Sinan says it can't make an independent jump until the fuel lines have stabilized. Kane's orders are to jump Daedalus to Pycon with the Battlestar Athena attached ASAP. That means we have to clear the scouts here or risk telegraphing our movements to the entire Cylon fleet. I'll prep the deck crews for the jump. All while right, you deal pretty with straightforward, the guys. We're proceeding into our very first battle here. Um, and of course, we're starting the campaign. You don't get the best ships initially. Obviously, if we want to get battle stars, if we want to get better ships, stronger ships, we're going to have to work for it. We're not just going to get it, you know, for free. So let's get started here on these missions. Let's see if we can survive against these Cylons. And then, of course, we move on to the serious enemies. Come on, I want to fight! It's time to make our so say we all. Here we go. Commander. I trust you won't need my instruction twice. Tell your ships to move full speed towards the enemy. All right, guys, so we are going to be moving, of course, towards the enemy. Um, and as you can see, you can change your elevation Proceed in this game, do all sorts of stuff. Commands. I'm going to be, of course, just going at a steady pace. I'm hoping this is good enough. We're going to end the turn, and we'll continue. And actually, and I'm also going to, uh, in a second here, Turrets will be less I'll go accurate. ahead and turn up Smaller Lucinda Kane's voice. Um, I know you guys can't hear her. And actually, the voice acting in this uh, in this game is excellent. It's really good, uh, and it's worth hearing. So let's turn her up a bit so we can hear what she says. And um, we could start firing missiles. I'm not sure if this is the only silent ship, so I'm going to slow down a bit. Yes, sir. Uh, so that we get the best shot. I'm also going to increase our attack power. Um, I guess right now we're getting the mini tutorial, so I'm going to go ahead, select the turrets. And this shows basically um, our, our range of fire. As you can see with the Manticore class, it only can shoot out of the front and the back. So we want to be careful. Although here, I'm afraid if I go too far this way, I'm going to ram into that ship. And I have been known to do that. I am going to boost attack. I guess I have to wait a little bit before we can start boosting our attack. Uh, 
yeah, that makes sense. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, let's focus our fire on the nemesis, and then we'll end our turn. There we go, baby. Let's get up close to that nemesis class. And he's actually kind of not moving too quickly. He's just scrolling along. Not a lot of our shots are actually hitting him. Uh, I he's definitely hit Contact. Dreadus okay, IFF confirms the contact, contact is a silent here. Corvette. Um, of course, Scanning we're going to continue further attacking this guy. I thought we had a little game crash there, but looks like we're okay, so great. Um, and I don't want to keep going this way because I could actually see us crashing into the enemy ship. So one of these guys is going to go after that ship. Uh, the other one is going to go after the other ship. Makes sense, right? I think so. Um, so now, of course, we allow the ship to attack. Oh, that's right. We have to go These ahead, Cylon uh, Corvettes the won't hold up to sustained fire. Focus your turrets on one side to punch through their armor and destroy the hull. These ships also have long-range guided munitions, useful for softening okay, a target and before closing in for the kill. now we get to use our missiles. This is my favorite part, my personal favorite. We're going to go ahead, we're going to fire a guided missile at that yes, nemesis. Yes, Commander. Um, at this other nemesis, I'll get him next time, but right now I'm going to fire a guided missile at the same nemesis. We're so close that I think we're going to get a really nice amount of damage. And missiles it's incoming! And that the enemy's going to miss the shot. So there we go, wow. They shot at us too. And actually this Manticore is going to take two full salvos of missiles. That's not something I like to see, but Commander, there's not really much we can do about it. Your ships don't um, seem to be right performing now. as well as they should. Uh, they may have system damage that's been overlooked. All right, let's do. Tell the engineering damage. crews aboard those ships to hot fix what they can. I'll see to their comprehensive repair once you've finished with your engagement. Okay, well he's not too happy about the way we've treated these ships. Understood. Um, it kind of sounds like my landlord when she sees the house. Uh, let's turn around here and keep aiming here, and hopefully we get a kill on this guy. His back armor is pretty bad at this point. We've hit him a lot of times, and I'm hoping that we could start breaking through that hull. It looks like that's exactly what's happening. We're not in a position to have our awesome Viper class ships right now. Subsystem repairs um, are complete. So we have to really, you know, rely on our Manticores to get these kills, uh, and that makes things a lot more difficult. Of course, this is the tactical map. It's kind of showing us how to use that. Quite an important part of the game. And once again, I'm going to keep this Manticore back here because the enemy could at any point um, decide, especially this ship, to try to crash into us, ram into us, and get some extra damage points. I've seen them do it before, and I've done it myself. So let's Okay, guys, I think we're going to go ahead. We're going to end the turn, and we're going to head towards the enemy. You can see we're really trying to hit that last uh, Nemesis-class ship, that Cylon ship. We're actually getting some pretty good shots on him, uh, but this is what I worry about. The enemy could be trying to crash into us. He's flying low, um, but he could be flying low for a reason. I'm going to actually go ahead and increase the altitude of this guy and decrease the altitude of this guy so that we can get down on this other guy's level eventually. Understood. Um, I'm going to trust that this this guy can actually kill the enemy, and if not, we can always try to fire missiles once they reload. But there we go! First Nemesis down, first Cylon ship down, and hopefully the first of many more guys. Now, of course, we need to turn and face this bastard, and hopefully we send him to a nice galactic grave. I was going to say watery, and then I realized we're not playing that kind Onyx of shit game, you fool. Um, let's go ahead and fire our missiles, guys. So most of the time, the guided missiles do reach their target. Occasionally, they miss. Occasionally, on you their might way. also get one of your own ships in the way, and they end up taking the blast. So we want to be careful that that doesn't happen, uh, but we do want to fire our missiles. There we go, baby. The enemy's firing, too. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the Silence definitely have more missiles. Manticore is taking sense, damage. Um, because if you've watched the series, um, you would know that the Cylons actually have mostly missiles. In fact, I don't even think they use bullets. Uh, they use just missiles. Um, their, their ground units have bullets, but you rarely see them. And so it kind of makes sense that they would have six. Uh, right now, we're destroying their rear. That sounded very strange, but we are. We're destroying this guy. And they're headed towards our shipyard. So we've got to get rid of this guy. We can't let him approach our shipyards and possibly cause damage to them. Let's go on ahead it, Commander. and keep chasing. Come on, boys. Get him. You can do it. A few more shots. This thing's finished. And there she goes. There she blows and there she goes. Our hostile contacts are down. Touch our ship. We recorded a bit feed of the battle if the Commander would like to replay accomplished. the fleet's performance. So let's actually take a look here. Um, it looks like our first Manticore, 50% accuracy, 94% damage uh, uh, dealt. So the Percy's Manticore instead of the Lancer is doing a lot better now. Um, of course, we are going to watch the view replay. We're going to watch it in auto cam, guys. So this allows us to see it from the perspective of sort of how the show would do it. Um, and this gets really neat, especially when you start having Vipers show up. 
uh, because we can see exactly what the Vipers are doing. But of course, our men are coming in to destroy the enemy here. And don't forget that in this game, you could also use a free cam for instant replays so that you get, you know, an even better view or, you know, I prefer this view, but you might think the free cam is better. Uh, certainly more customizable. Uh, but with this cam, I mean, I just love it. It reminds me of the actual space battles in the show. Uh, and I really hope we get a nice explosion here because they look incredible. Look at that. That beauty's still firing Manticore, and he's just got that frontal gun. He's got a gun on the back, too. Uh, it's a very powerful weapon, but, you know, if you only have one of them, you're not going to get a lot of hits. That's kind of what's happening here. Come on, Manticore. You can see the enemy beneath us there. That was a very close call. That could have easily been a crash, guys. So we got very, very lucky that we didn't uh, drop him. There's the first one going down. First Cylon going down or up. It really depends. Whatever space wants to do with it. <laughs> Whatever particular gravitational pull is closest. Um, and now, of course, we're turning for that last one. I love how those guys fired um, just in, in quick succession like that, you know, right after the other. Um, it's actually one of the reasons I really like this Wego system. Some people were complaining that they didn't like the turn-based aspect of the game. I love it. Um, I don't think you could have battles like this in space without having a turn-based aspect, especially when we start getting our battle stars. Uh, those massive ships take a while to turn around, um, and if you're, if you're just doing that in free time without any pausing, uh, you're likely to, to mess up quite a lot. So there we go. Boom! That's a great mission success. Let's see what's next. Congratulations, Commander. But we still have work to do. Of course. I always have work to do. This is the Agrippa Maxenius channel. Um, so we're going to go ahead and access a mission briefing. Kane has got her stomping boots on. Started shelling out orders before she'd even finished sticking the Admiral pin to her jacket. She's out to prove she's ready for the top job of Colonial Fleet. Can't feel good to earn that promotion off the back of your superior's bad luck. But we've all lost someone in this war, I guess. My sister was on Galactica before it disappeared. Pycon's government is blaming Kane for not delivering Athena earlier. Both she and Sinan won't be happy until we've delivered all 12 of the Jupiters to the colonies. Well, at least we'll get to see Athena clear out some toasters before we hand her over to PyCon. Daedalus is ready to jump on your command, sir. Roger that. And of course, toasters is a sort of a slang term for the Cylons. Um, so Daedalus and the Strategy Index give the jump command. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to jump to the mission marker, guys. Let's confirm that jump to PyCon, and we will end our turn. And of course, if it takes us a little too long to jump, we might actually end up having to pay more Tilium which is the currency used in the game. Uh, so we will proceed and take a look at this mission, guys. Here we go. And let's hope we I think we get our battle star in this mission, although I could be mistaken. No, not yet. I don't believe so anyway. Uh, we just have to essentially move Fleet the Fleet group dials. is jumping in three, two, one. Jump complete. Dratus contacts bearing 017, Karam 021. PyCon and the rest of the 12 colonies are watching our every move, Commander. Some would see Colonial Fleet fail. Ensure we succeed. No pressure, sir. No pressure at all. Okay, guys, you heard them. They want Colonial Fleet to do well, and I was right. We do get the Athena Jupiter-class battle star. Um, I believe it's a battle star. I'm almost certain it is. Um, once again, I'm not as well uh, versed in the show as a lot of you guys, um, but I do believe that that is a battle star, um, and hopefully you guys will see it in the next episode. On but it, of course, Commander. Uh, if you want to see the next episode, make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, support us as much as you can, and I promise you the more people we get hitting those like buttons, the better, because it probably means we're going to jump to the next episode a lot sooner than we otherwise would. Uh, we will, of course, see this guy in action first. I want to see him leaving the shipyards myself. That's gotta be a battle star, right? Just look at it. Um, and of course, we're gonna move him into combat position. Ships are not lifeless assets to needlessly uh, throw at the enemy. To see enemy that, commander. you're gonna have to see the next episode. Adjust so a ship's posture to tailor sure the crew's to tactics, like button, guys. so that you, you can match whatever opposition awesome you encounter.